Castlefield is one of many galleries that are artist-led or artist-focused. Many have a membership program or a loose network of artists that support and staff the gallery on a rolling basis. A gallery may follow the career of an artist over a long period. Opportunities may arise once they get to know you and your work. I've been there, I guess, for sort of over 10 years. Since 2005, I've been the director, and we try to spot and try to work with emerging to mid-career artists to support their practice, but also to bring what we think is high quality or experimental contemporary art to audiences around Manchester and beyond. A couple of years ago, we really looked at the structure of how we present the, the exhibitions we have. So um, we currently have between seven and eight shows a year. And um, the curated shows, we have four of those a year, and they're in four strands. The first strand is a head-to-head, -head, which is we um, invite a more experienced artist to work with a uh, more uh, emerging artist. And we see a link in their work. So they, they, they don't know each other, they haven't collaborated before. We, we see something um, in their work. For example, we showed um, Hayley Newman and Emily Speed last year really interesting. We have a review show um, and currently we have Ian Andrews, Manchester-based artist. One of the best painters I've seen for a very long time actually. He's under 40, really great. And the review is to give an artist an opportunity at the right time in their development for a solo show. The third strand is uh, a self-made strand, which is um, to maybe look at um, artists who are uh, not trained as artists. Maybe they're self-taught, maybe they're from other disciplines. And the next one we have is working with Bob and Roberta Smith, who is obviously an artist, but working with the Kersler Trust, who works with um, art made in prisons. So it could be uh, poetry, uh, visual arts. Obviously, we're going to focus on visual arts because that's what we are about. But it's really to encourage or to kind of incorporate and expand the definition of contemporary art. Um, the fourth strand is um, art and society, where we look at art and artists' um, agency um, in the world, I suppose. Um, the last show we had was P uh, London-based Pill and Galia Collective, and they curated the show for us, um, looking at the um, radical ideas that seemingly coming from the right, from conservatism, um, rather than from the radical left. So they're the four strands, but importantly, in between, we also have these launch pads and they're shorter, punchier, more responsive shows where we invite mainly um, our, launch, our CG associates, our Castlefield Gallery associates, to propose shows. So we um, started our Castlefield Gallery associate scheme in December 2012 and really is a response to looking at how do we work with a network of artists. We've always been a bit of a hub for artists anyway, but it's to formalise that a little bit. So the membership scheme is geared mainly towards artists, but also to in, for independent curators and writers too. We have um, CG Associates who can propose shows for the exhibitions programme, the Launchpad programme. They also um, can um, use our new art spaces, which are our pop-up buildings. Um, we have about four of those at the moment around Greater Manchester and beyond. And they're, they're really an opportunity for artists to look at, um, to make a project or try something out or maybe just have a workspace for a limited time. Quite interestingly enough, I think apart from you know, um, getting a show, that, that's the, the, the aim, they also get their work seen by not just us as curators, but also uh, with selected our peers from around the country. At the moment we've got, for example, um, uh, Stephen Snoddy from New Art Gallery Warsaw is selecting the next launch pad with our program manager Matthew Pendergast. Uh, we've used um, um, Brian E. Bond from the Whitworth Art Gallery before, uh, Brian Biggs from Blue Coat. So we try to bring in our peers and I think the benefit of open submission shows is that um, artists get seen by a wider group of experts but um, we encourage any any emerging artists who are ambitious to get in touch. How do you discover the artists you work with? We, we try to go to as many open studios as possible, go to, to uh, as many shows as possible, particularly emerging because that's the, you know, they're, they're not yet um, documented. So I think it's more important for the, emer the emerging artists to really document their work properly. So if they have a show that you can't, um, that we can't go to, send us a package later on and say this show happened and I'm really pleased with them trying to develop my work further. Keep it short and sweet, give us some nice images of your work, um, an artist statement, 
a, a short kind of bio or CV kind of thing. Keep it to those three things really. We, we definitely log and track people. Um, for example, um, um, Ian Andrews, who we're showing at the moment, I saw him in a portfolio session about six years ago in, um, in Waterside Art Centre in Sale. It was great because I saw, you know, he was the most memorable in that session. And it's only now, six years later, that we're able to offer him a solo show. How does the gallery work with local developers? Our pop-up spaces, uh, which we call new art spaces, um, it's really crucial because we, um, we, we realise that a lot of artists don't have enough, a simple opportunities to make and show work, really. I mean, there's only a certain amount of galleries in, in say, Manchester. And we've been, we've been working like this, I suppose, since 2006. We've been working with landlords to try to get space to, to do pop-ups. The kind of setup now is that we negotiate with landlords so that they give us a space and they also donate some money to us to run the spaces. So this, this space that we're sitting in is courtesy of the co-op. We're sitting in this um, area called Noma, North Manchester. It's a regeneration site. We have about 100 artists working in the building right now. Uh, we have single individual artists. We have artists groups and we also have artists development agencies as well, so about 100 artists working uh, within that sphere. I think one thing to say about the pop-up scene as well, I remember as a young artist how difficult it was to negotiate with landlords. Um, you, can make, you can make 50 phone calls and you may not have one lead that goes anywhere. So we are trying to take that kind of um, knowledge that we have, but also as a charity and as an organisation that has some reputation, we can take that and, and create an umbrella that artists then can then not waste their time to throw up landlords and agents um, to try to procure a pop-up. We can do that for them in a way. I mean, there's loads of limitations with that, but we're trying to kind of use our agency to be able to create opportunities for artists in this way. How is the gallery funded? Okay, so Castlefield Gallery is funded through uh, mainly three areas of um, uh, resources. Uh, one is public funding, so we we get some funding from Arts Council through Grants for the Arts. We get some money from the City Council, Manchester City Council, through the Culture Partnership. We try to earn some income and that's through consultancy. We're currently working with the Brewery Arts Centre in Kendall, for example, uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. We are hosting uh, some of the students' uh, work and developments in this building. We're also working with Creative Industries Trafford to do talent development. In fact, we work with a number of agencies and organisations, in institutions to do um, talent development, professional development for artists. We hire um, the gallery out sometimes, and of course we need to be careful that it doesn't incoming shows don't conflict with our programme. Um, we have an office in Castlefield Gallery headquarters that we hire out to a uh, creative industries uh, partner. We also sell work sometimes. It's not a big income, but all these little bits um, count towards you know the whole of, co of course and match funding. Two years ago, though, we we did a big fundraiser, um, an auction, which we got. Um, luckily, we got loads of support from artists and curators nationally, and that really kind of helped us to um, get into a steady foothold after not receiving revenue funding. So it was kind of, so we will have like the fundraisers again in the future as well. That raised, I think we netted 30,000 pounds, which is great. And it really showed the support that um, the arts um, uh, world has for us. Because we got 30 this year, the next 12 months, we're gonna be going into uh, what we call intergenerational program. And really is to capture the spirit of the last 30 years. And really is looking at how different generations of artists um, can influence and support the, the developments of emerging artists. And of course, it's not one way. We know that when you have artists talking to other artists, um, you know, the more experienced artists learn a lot from the emerging as well. So it's really it's a program that reflects that, but also just to highlight that um, the Castfield Gallery was built on artists having a go. Mm -hmm.